hej, gramy dalej w Dead Synchronicity. No i teraz będziemy musieli odnaleźć Sara. Takie jest nasze zadanie, jakie przydzielił nam Chris Blanston. No i nie tylko Sarę, ale także jakieś dokumenty, które powiedziałyby nam więcej na temat synchroni śmierci. Well, I can't remember her clearly. Looking at this photograph gives me a pleasant sense of tranquility. I'm sure Sarah and I were very good friends before the world collapsed. Locked with a key. I'm afraid that Chris doesn't trust anyone. And the way things turned out after the great wave, he's doing the right thing. Czas nagli, zatem może jeszcze tylko przyjrzyjmy się notatkom z gazet i zerkniemy też na biurko Chrisa, no i ruszymy w drogę. Dozens of documents and newspaper clippings about conspiracies, attacks, inexplicable occurrences. Looking at the topics of all this material, I can imagine what the editorial line of the new truth is. Covered with scrawled notes, open books, and dirty coffee mugs. I get the impression that Chris lives, works, eats and sleeps at this enormous desk. Trochę pewnie smutno mu tak samemu w tej chwili bez Sary. No ale cóż, takie życie. W tej rzeczywistości nawet posiadanie niezłego lokum, w którym jest dużo miejsca, to już i tak jest mm, duża sprawa, to i tak jest luksus. Here goes. I'll use the map Chris gave me as a guide. These tunnels are a real labyrinth. This is the place marked on the map, the place where Sarah and her confidential source were found. They wouldn't be of any use to me. These bullets have already been fired. They gleam like gold nuggets, illuminated by the light that enters through the ceiling. These empty shell casings are evidence that a shooting occurred in these sewers. To kiedyś ludzie ukrywali rozpuszczonych, ale obecnie musimy się mieć na baczności, ponieważ to miejsce zostało odkryte już przez żołnierzy. There's a very familiar sound coming from the depths of the tunnel behind this grate. It's a subway train. I don't get it. If they boarded up the subway stops and shut down the subway service, what the devil are those trains carrying? And where are they going? Damn it. More than the cop graffiti. This pestilent city is oozing blood from every pore. The trail disappears, drip by drip, into that tunnel. No dobra, schodzimy tam. It's an enormous accumulation of trash, mud and plant matter that has built up in the years since this pipe was last cleaned. Ugh, there's a stench coming from inside it. Even worse than the rest of the sewer. There's something else in there in that heap of trash. Oh, Jesus! The stench is nauseating. Czyżby smród jakichś, nie wiem, szczątków ludzkich, zwierzęcych, a może odchodów, trudno powiedzieć. Użyjmy łomu. Widać, że trzymała coś w dłoni. One bullet hit her in the jaw, and another went through part of her neck. There's no doubt that Sarah bled to death while using the last of her strength, trying to drag herself out of here. A flash drive. It's sticking out of the corpse's clenched fist. Sarah is holding on to it for dear life, even in death. No tak, niby nasza podróż być może zakończy się połowicznym sukcesem, jeśli można to tak nazwać w tych okolicznościach, bo zyskaliśmy kartę pamięci, na której być może są jakieś istotne i użyteczne dane. No ale co z tego, skoro prawdopodobnie nasza przyjaciółka no i żona Chrisa, o ile się nie mylę, tak to jest Chris, zginęła, została zastrzelona przez żołnierzy. No, przez ludzi, którzy nie liczą się z życiem. Z życiem tych słabszych, z życiem tych, na których im nie zależy. Smutne to, no i trzeba to będzie jakoś powiedzieć Chrisowi. Hello, Chris. Michael, you're back already? Tell me, did you find Sarah? Did you bring the report she went out to get? I brought the report. 
Here it is. Oh, that's great news. I knew you could do it. Ah, oh, damn it. I should have guessed. I was expecting a paper dossier, not an electronic document. We have a serious problem, Michael. Problem? What's wrong? We're not in the old world anymore. And access to electricity is a privilege very few people have nowadays. The good news is that I was able to save my old laptop from the Great Wave. The bad news is that we don't have anywhere to plug it in. What can we do? If we want to find out the secrets in this report, we need electricity. Bring me a generator with enough fuel, and we'll find all the answers we need, Michael. But tell me, please, did you find Sarah? Why didn't she come back with you? What happened? Mamy chyba przynajmniej o ile sięgam pamięcią jedyny wybór moralny w całej grze, więc można się poczuć podobnie jak w niektórych tytułach Telltale Games, albo tym bardziej w Life is Strange. Ale oczywiście skala jest zupełnie inna. Możemy powiedzieć Chrisowi, że Sara nie żyje, a możemy ukryć to przed nim i powiedzieć, że ślady, które odnaleźliśmy wskazują, że jest cała i bezpieczna i wkrótce pewnie do niego wróci. No ale czy oczekiwanie takie ciągłe przez res resztę życia byłoby dla Chrisa lepsze niż świadomość, że Sara nie żyje? Nie sądzę, dlatego zachowajmy się, niech się zachowa Michael jak facet i niech powie prawdę. I'm sorry, Chris. Sarah's dead. Good God. But what? It looks like she and your confidential source were ambushed and shot by soldiers in the sewers. I found Sarah's body in one of the graded tunnels near the refugee camp. I took the report out of her hands, but I had to leave her there. Oh, my poor Sarah. She... she didn't deserve that. Please, Michael, don't leave her body to rot in the sewers. I beg of you. Do it for me. For Sarah. For Emily. I'll do what I can, Chris. I promise you. Now, get me that electric generator. Time is running out. No, niestety. What do we have here? I tak przyjął to w miarę z podniesionym, z podniesioną głową tę straszną informację. There are only old magazines, stacks of paper and outdated printing supplies here. No, wait a minute. It looks like there's also film for instant cameras here. Czyli co mamy? Mamy film do aparatu. Perfect. Now I can load the camera. Ah, oh, the tab that closes the film compartment is broken. I can't use it like this. I need something to hold it in place, or else the film will keep falling out. No i teraz zagadka z cyklu przygodówkowe osobliwości. Używamy naszego zęba, który nam pomoże uporać, uporać się z problemem zepsutego pojemnika na film. I can't believe it. The tooth fragment fits perfectly into the slot for the broken tab. Now I can close the film compartment. Ja też nie mogę w to uwierzyć, szczerze mówiąc, ale taka jest prawda. Mamy aparat gotowy do użycia, czyli no, jesteśmy gotowi w zasadzie, by wyruszyć i rozwiązywać kolejne zagadki. After the great wave, this device is a real archaeological artifact from the old world, like an ancient coin or a dinosaur bone. It looks like it's in good shape. Except for one thing, there's nowhere to plug it in. A to może warto byłoby się zaopatrzyć w laptopa. Ja nie mam laptopa, skoro w przeszłości ma to być artefakt. Before leaving his house, I shoot a furtive glance at Chris. He's gazing in Sarah's photo in silence, completely lost in thought. Maybe I should have lied about what happened to her, told him that she got away, leaving the report behind, that she's safe and sound, and just waiting for the right moment to come back. The truth is a poisonous inheritance from the old world. What good does it do to know it if it snatches away your last hope? Prawda czy fałszywa nadzieja, ale fałszywa nadzieja często sprawia jeszcze większy ból. No, wszystko zależy od konkretnego człowieka. Trudno decydować. Chyba prawda jest lepsza, chociaż nie mnie to oceniać. Tak zdecydowałem i koniec. Dobra, mam aparat załadowany, mam też latarkę, można zrobić wreszcie zdjęcie tej bazy medyczno... jakiejś tam medyczno-paliwowej, energetycznej. 
No i później to zdjęcie damy łowcy. Który nam, mam nadzieję, pomoże po tym, jak swoją część umowy doprowadzimy do skutku pomyślnego. This door leads to a dingy back room. What the hell could be in here? I can hear the buzz of electricity coming from inside, but I can't figure out anything more without a little more light. Mamy światło. Na szczęście mamy źródło światła, nie na... notatnikiem nie poświecę raczej. Let's see what this room actually is with a little light. All right. I'll flip the switch for the only circuit that's not blown. Hmm. I think I hear the buzz of electricity coming from the surface. Tylko to się po jakimś czasie automatycznie wyłącza, gdybyśmy na przykład teraz yy, pobiegli do bazy, no to później już by się tu nie świeciło. Dlatego trzeba szybko, póki mamy czas, zrobić to zdjęcie. Perfect. Zdjęcie wyszło idealnie. Jest ostre. Także możemy już biec do łowcy szybciutko. No bo tak naprawdę świat zwolna pogrąża się w chaosie. No i rzeczywiście, jeśli to wszystko, czego się na każdym kroku dowiadujemy, jest tak przerażające, na jakie wygląda, no to lepiej nie tracić ani minuty. No właśnie. To teraz, czy iść... No tak, kołyska i dziecko to już to już jest załatwione, tak? Przypominam sobie poprzedni odcinek, który nagrywałem notabene tej nocy. Dlatego teraz widzicie jaką krótką ma pamięć, dlatego teraz idę tutaj. No i dam zdjęcie łowcy. I brought what we agreed. Here's the photograph of the fuel depot. Fantastic, Mike. Let's see what you've got there. This is incredible. Those pigs have been storing thousands of gallons of fuel, and all within our reach. With your ID, all we have to do is go into the compound, say hello, boys, and bring it all back here. You've just made me very, very happy, dude. I knew I wasn't wrong about you. Now you have to hold up your end of the bargain. Yes, of course I will, Mike. You know I'm a man of my word. Besides, these are hard times and we have to help one another, dude. I'll get Rod and his wife out of their trailer so you can have a little time alone with the boy. You have my word and my complete discretion. But remember that you promised that we'd do it my way, quietly and with no violence. I don't want anybody getting hurt. I just need your men to distract his parents on some pretext for long enough for me to slip in there, okay? Of course, Mike. You have my word that we'll only do what's necessary. Only what's strictly necessary. Give me a few minutes and then go to the trailer. Everything will be fine when you get there. Okay, but before I go, can I ask you for something else? Today you've been the bearer of the best possible news, dude. So shoot, I'll see what I can do. Some soldiers murdered a friend of mine in the sewers. I need you to take care of her body. Well, well, well. Murdered in the sewers. And what the hell was your friend doing there? Wait, don't answer. I've heard about that custom among some relatives of the sick. It means she was hiding a dissolved in the sewers. Or am I mistaken? Yes, you're absolutely, totally and completely wrong. I'm not going to tell you what she was doing there. About her commitment to learning the truth. To changing things in the shithole left behind by the Great Wave. Where you move around like a fish in water, you'd be incapable of understanding it. You couldn't even imagine making a sacrifice like that. Even I have a hard time imagining it. It's none of your business. Listen, Mike, you know what I think of those disease carriers and of the people who hide them. For everyone's sake, they all belong in the hands of the cleanup brigades. But you know what? Your intentions are good, giving a friend a decent burial. You're loyal to your friends, and I like that. Above all, you've got to be faithful. Loyalty is everything in this new world. So consider it done. I'll take care of it, dude. Her body is in the sewer tunnel that comes out by the entrance to the camp. Your friend will have a decent resting place. I give you my word. I need an electric generator urgently. Hey, hey, dude, calm down. I think you misinterpreted my offer. Since the Great Wave, 
A generator has become worth more than the lives of a hundred people in this camp. Don't think I couldn't get you one, but the price will be so high that I can't imagine how you'd be able to pay me. I'm sorry, Mike. But I just gave you access to thousands of gallons of fuel. But those barrels aren't walking out of that place on their own. My men and I are going to have to risk our hides by going into the lion's den. I'm sorry, but the matter is closed. You should be going now. I've got to get the trailer sorted out. Give me a few minutes and then you can go there, okay? Adios, dude. No, czyli niedługo dowiemy się, co nam miał do przekazania Colin. Wait a minute. What's that noise? Why is everyone fleeing? What's going on? The cleanup brigades are coming. And they're heading for Rod's trailer. God damn it! The hunters turned them in! That animal turns Colin and his family in! No, he's not sick. It's a mistake. Don't take him away. It's all a misunderstanding. It's just a question of minutes before those bastards break into the trailer and take the boy. No niestety, czyli w taki sposób postanowił to załatwić łowca. Zesłał tutaj brygady sprzątające, hmm, tak się nazywają. No i zabiorą Kolina i pewnie już nigdy nie zobaczy swoich rodziców, a rodzice jego. Okay, I've got to act fast. The noise the ambulance makes will cover the sound of the glass breaking. Może gdyby Rod się nie zachował tak w stosunku do Michaela, nie doszłoby do tego. Ale trudno, smutne to. Kolejna smutna rzecz w tej grze. Szkoda, że tak mało jest wesołych, a może i dobrze, przez to gra jest spójna i konsekwentnie buduje ten złowrogi, ponury nastrój. Michael? Michael, is that you? Yes, Colin. It's me. But how do you know my name? Emily told me a lot about you. That's how I know you. She gave me a message. She said it was very important that I give it to you. What's all that noise outside, Michael? Where are my parents? It's it's nothing, Colin. Your parents will be back very soon. Don't worry. But it's impossible for you to have spoken to Emily. She she's no longer with us. Yes. Yes, she is. Emily is always with me. When I go down the underground highways, she's there. Waiting for me. Emily gave me a message, Michael. She told me it was something very, very important. Tell me what happens on those underground highways, Colin. The highways are very dark, and I don't want to go down there. They're too scary. There's no light, and they're full of ghosts. There are only shadows and voices down there. Everyone seems very sad and angry, and they tell me things I don't want to know, things I don't even understand. At first, I hid the whole time, so they wouldn't find me. Or I wandered around by myself for hours in the dark, until I met Emily. Now I'm not so afraid of the underground highways, Michael, because she's always there. Hmm. You say that Emily takes care of you? But how is that possible? She protects me. She keeps me from feeling scared, because I used to be really scared. I didn't know what was happening to me. I didn't understand anything. But now with Emily by my side, everything is much better. She tells me that what's happening to me is normal, that I'm just sick, but that the sickness will go away soon, and that the pain will go away for good then, that she also got really scared when she got sick. Emily told you that she also got sick? Yes, she told me that she went through this before me, that a while back she got the same sickness I have. She told me that she felt very lonely too, and that the pain was unbearable. But that it finally ended, and that's why I shouldn't worry. That the pain and the fear will go away. She's very kind to me, Michael. She's very kind to everybody, isn't she? Yes, Colin. Yes, she is. Emily contracted the same disease. No, it can't be. Emily, a dissolved? Is that why they didn't let me see your body? Is that the reason for all the secrecy surrounding your death? Pravdopodobně tak. And what is this message you have to give me that's so important? She told me that she couldn't come back to be with us. That she will be trapped forever on the underground highways. 
and that the same thing will happen to me very soon. That's why she asked me to tell you that we're connected, Michael. She told me that you'd understand. We're connected, and it's very important for you to remember that. Connected? What does that mean, Colin? Emily told me there was a thread that no one can see that joins us to you, and that's why there's still a chance we can be saved, but that only you could do it while there's still time. She told me that if we're connected, there's still some hope for us all. Can you make everything go back to the way it was, Michael? I don't want to be stuck on the underground highways forever. Can you really make everything go back the way it was, Michael? We're connected? What does that mean? I don't understand anything. This is all crazy. Michael, help me. It hurts so much. Make it stop. Colin, what's happening? Make it stop. Please. way and let us do our job. No, don't go in there. I beg of you. My son. My son. Colin, no. No. <laughs> Damn it. I can't breathe. If it's true that there's a way to change all this, I have to find it now. I don't think I can stand it any longer. I don't think anyone can. No, mam 33 lata i na mnie ta gra robi wrażenie. Syndrom 12 plus mam chyba w związku z tą grą. Naprawdę scena, przy której no, rzeczywiście trzeba mieć trochę też nerwów. Widać jak Colin się rozpuszcza na naszych oczach. Można tutaj zerknąć, zostały krwawe ślady szczątki Colina, w zasadzie sama krew. Colin. His fate was sealed long before I woke up. Where could Rod and his wife be? Truth is, I'd rather not know the answer. Zabraliśmy broń z pudełka ciastek, więc chyba plan na samobójstwo, który miał Rod i jego żona, spali na panewce. No, ale samobójstwo można można popełnić na wiele różnych sposobów, więc nie jest powiedziane, że będą żyć dalej. No, ale my mamy rewolwer. No i czas na kolejne. Ciekawe, bądź niezbyt ciekawe, zależy jak na to patrzeć rzeczy. Spróbujemy dać rewolwer Rose. Hello, Mr. Sleepyhead. Have you come to help us? I don't know whether who I was before the great wave entitles me to make any kind of moral judgments. But what I do know is that the hunter and his men are a real cancer in this new world, which is the only thing that really counts right now. The girl has a right to defend herself, that bastard said. So someone should give her the chance to do that. It's only fair, right? I can't get you out of here, Rose. I'm sorry. You're the only one that can do it. Thank you. As she was picking up the revolver, she gave me a look of determination that I didn't know she had in her. Rose acted so quickly that I barely saw what happened through the crack in the door of her van. Her hand was steady, even when the second man begged for his life. Sobbing and groveling on the floor, the bullet went right through his heart. Blood splattered all over her white dress. And then she let the revolver drop and sat down, lost in her own world. And she didn't do or say anything else, holed up in her tiny, delirious inner landscape. There she had everything she could ever need, safe at last from the new world, which she will probably never return to. Zabieram monety i idę. Jeszcze to wrócimy, ale na razie... Ech, na razie trzeba odetchnąć i pójść do swojego mieszkania. No, sw swoją drogą zginęło dwóch ludzi, ale przynajmniej Rose może czuć się wolna. Tylko pytanie, czy ona sobie poradzi w tym świecie sama. 
Czy nie przechwyci jej ktoś inny i też nie wykorzysta w taki bądź inny sposób, a może trafi w ręce jakichś dobrych ludzi? O ile jeszcze tacy chodzą po tej ziemi. No nie wiadomo, nie wiadomo właściwie, czy jak zareagować na tę sytuację. Użyjmy zatem monet na belce. Let's see. The coins fit perfectly in the heads of the screws. It'll be no trouble loosening them and taking the fabric with me. Dobra, mamy tło fotograficzne. Czarny worek, te dwie rzeczy, które w tej chwili są dla mnie istotne. Także możemy już wracać do Rose. I'm afraid those bastards just played their last hand. I can't help but think those guys got what was coming to them, even if that's a thought worthy of the hunter. There's no point in bothering her. Fortunately for her, Rose isn't here anymore. Potrzebny nam był generator. That's what happens when you bring electrical devices in contact with water. The contents of the water tank made it completely useless. Zepsu się w wyniku strzału. No, the water turned the generator into an enormous hunk of scrap metal. Why would I want to take it with me in this condition? The hell? Another one of those repeating images of those damn time loops. No, Rose. No, don't do it. No, it's Rose killing her captors again. But there's something in this one that makes it different. It feels more real and more intense than the other times. No, it's just shit. Go do it, man. Kurde. Nie zdążyliśmy chyba. Okay. First I'll unplug the cables that connected to the trailer. A jednak myślałem, że nastąpiło to zwarcie. Ale jak się wydaje, generator jest sprawny. I still don't quite know how I managed it. But it's a generator I saved from Rose's shots. I just hope it helps us find the answers we need to explain all this craziness. No właśnie, a przecież to się działo w przeszłości. Cofnęliśmy się trochę w tył. I'm not going to pick up that revolver. What for? Rose fired the only two bullets left in the chamber. To jest oczywiste, bo w przód się cofnąć nie mogliśmy. No dobra, mamy generator. To najistotniejsze, a tę scenę możemy sobie teraz interpretować. Co takiego ma w sobie John? Jaki John? Michael? Że był w stanie zmienić bieg sytuacji, która miała, mie miała miejsce, wydarzyła się kilkadziesiąt minut wcześniej, powiedzmy, bądź godzinę, nie wiem. Ale mamy generator, więc zanieśmy go naszemu przyjacielowi. I brought the generator you need, Chris. Great, Michael. I knew you could do it. Give me a few minutes to set up the computer and open the report. While Chris was getting everything ready, I decided to sit down in one of the armchairs in the office. I was exhausted. My mind had been trying to make sense of the last few hours of my life for what seemed like an eternity. The first hours following my bitter birth in this new world. But how could I judge the new world if I could barely remember the old one? The only thing I was sure of was that we had lost something very valuable on the way. The photograph of our life, overnight, had turned into a dark, blurry, sepia-tinted image. All of civilization had drowned under the great wave, and the only thing left on the beach or its remains. But no, I was fooling myself. I was already lost before the catastrophe. To tell the truth, all the other victims of the Great Wave had been luckier than me. They still dreamed of returning to their lives. Mine had already been broken a long time ago. 
Did I really stand a chance of recovering something I'd already lost forever? What type of strength, what type of miracle could ever give me that second chance? Michael, wake up! What's happening? The report, Michael. It's the report. I was going over it while you were sleeping. It's incredible. It's way beyond our expectations. You're gonna think I've gone crazy, but I don't even know where to start. How about at the beginning? Okay. It's the dead synchronicity point. The entire universe is changing, and we're going to witness it. We're going to be witnesses. And victims. Witnesses? Victims? But what the hell are you talking about? What is this dead synchronicity point? It's hard to explain. You're a photographer, so I'll try this analogy. Imagine a person's life chronicled in photographs. Up to now, and according to the rules that governed our universe, we were all subject to certain very specific temporal rules. Past, present, and future. That's all there was to it. So, the first thing we'd find would be a photo of the person as a newborn, then another on the person's sixth birthday, then another in college, and so on. Then we'd see photos of the person's wedding, children, old age, death, all in logical, linear, chronological order. Since our universe is conceived along a single line that starts in the past, makes a stopover in the present, and then projects into the future. Do you follow me? Yes, of course I follow you. Well, imagine now that this entire temporal architecture crumbles, falls apart, dissolves. Imagine that something or someone has altered the foundations of our universe, changing the rules of the game, forever annihilating our idea of time. The concepts of past, present, and future. Well, I think you just lost me, Chris. Then let me continue with the metaphor of the photographs. Imagine now that a card dealer takes all these snapshots that sum up the life of this person, shuffles them, and places them in a stack in one spot on the card table. What would we have then? There would no longer be a chronological line, Michael. There would be no past, present, or future. Each of the individual events captured in these photographs, they would all be happening simultaneously at the exact same point in time. And that point we would call... The dead synchronicity point. Exactly. Now our world is abandoning its old physical laws and getting closer to that dead synchronicity point where time no longer exists. And therefore, all the phenomena and events that happened or will happen in the universe will start to be stacked on top of other ones, like the photographs in the dealer's deck. That sounds crazy. How credible do you think this report is? Completely, Michael. The dead synchronicity point is a fact, and the worst thing is that we're approaching it faster and faster. It'll only be a matter of days, at best maybe a few weeks, before the universe enters this new state. Time is ending, in every sense. And what does all this have to do with us? Come on, do you still not see it? This change in the architecture of the universe, this nullification of time, is the real origin of the great wave, the dissolved, and the emergence of the new world. Hmm. Rzeczywiście bardzo to wszystko zawiłe. So the great wave was caused by this approach to the dead synchronicity point? Yes, Michael. The great wave was the first manifestation of our universe's approach to the dead synchronicity point. That's why the catastrophe struck at the same time all over the planet. It wasn't just a local occurrence. It had global dimensions. It was the first clear and obvious sign that something was going wrong. And it brought chaos and misery to the world, as you've been seeing yourself since you woke up. What the hell do the Dissolved have to do with all this? According to the report, the Dissolved are still a big mystery. There isn't much information about them or their disease. What we do know is that they are people who are especially sensitive to the dead synchronicity point, and that is what's so tragic about them. Especially sensitive? Of course. 
this transformation, this radical and overwhelming change in the basic structure of the universe is totally incompatible with human life. We're condemned to die, Michael. Each and every one of us. That's terrible. How can you be so sure of that? If you think about it rationally, it's obvious. Our bodies are the product of hundreds of thousands of years of evolution, of a gradual and precarious adaptation to the environment, the universe, and its physical laws. Reaching the dead synchronicity point, the annihilation of time, we'd need another hundred thousand years to adapt to such a drastic change. And what do you think will happen to the human race, to each and every one of us when this process concludes? I'll tell you. Our primary metabolism will go into a state of shock. Our entire cell structure will be jolted so profoundly and so violently that what we now call our bodies will lose all coherence, leaving behind just a brown puddle as evidence of our existence. We'll dissolve like those poor sick people. Indeed. According to the report, the dissolved are simply pioneers, people who are ahead of their time the vanguard of the human race in its final extinction. That's why some cases started cropping up so early, even before the Great Wave. Their illness was the harbinger of the enormous explosion that was to follow. It preceded it by hours, even days. And that's why the cases are multiplying exponentially as we get closer to the end. Do you understand? We'll all end up turning into dissolved. Hmm. Czyli w jakiś sposób czas się nakłada na siebie, no i koniec ludzkości jest tylko kwestią czasu. The last time we spoke, you told me that there could be a solution, a way to reverse all this madness. Yes, and that's the best part of the report. Theoretically, Michael, and paradoxical as it may sound, our progress toward the dead synchronicity point also brings the opportunity to change things to turn the process around and return to where we were before our world collapsed. And how would that be possible? By penetrating the very center of the anomaly, the deepest nucleus of dead synchronicity, and arriving at the point where time is just starting to fold back into itself before the process is completed. If, inside the dead synchronicity point, each and every one of the events that have happened or will happen in the universe unfold, then surely it must be possible to gain access to the moment when something or someone triggered the catastrophe and stop it. I can't believe what I'm hearing. You're talking about time travel. Yes. I'm talking about the possibility of accessing the past to save our present and our future of turning the great wave and all its consequences into a mere nightmare that never actually happened. The report talks about the hypothetical existence of a door leading into the very heart of the dead synchronicity point, a door to each and every one of the snapshots of the past, present, and future of our universe. And if, through that door, we had a chance to access the precise instant when everything went haywire, then we might be able to change things. Michael, that's what we've got to focus on in whatever time we have left. But I have to continue studying this report. I'm sure there are more answers in it. And you have got to help me. You're telling me that the dead synchronicity point is the origin of all this chaos? That our only chance of salvation is a theoretical journey to the past? Or sooner or later we'll all be obliterated? Like those poor dissolved? That's right, Michael. So we'd better get to work on it as soon as possible. By the way, the report also mentions another very interesting thing about the dissolved. What is it? It seems that in their trances, through their trips to the underground highways, the sick form a strange relationship with each other. It's as if the disease unites them, regardless of any physical distance that might separate them. The report is very unclear on this point, but it seems as if the dissolved are somehow linked, connected. My God, that can't be. Remember, please remember. Everything fits now. Everything makes sense. Please, enough. My head. Emily asked me to tell you that we're connected, Michael. We're connected. 
Michael, what's going on? Chris, get one of those tests ready, fast. But what for? You don't think that you're also? Do as I say. Okay, give me your hand. It's positive. Michael, you're sick. You're a dissolved. No! That can't be! No! No! Michael? Michael? Wake up! Emily? Emily? Is that you? Please, Michael, wake up. Wake up! Is that really you? Where, where am I? Yes, Michael. It's me. You are... on the underground highways. No tak, graliśmy w Dead Synchronicity Tomorrow Comes Today, no i zakończyliśmy rozgrywkę w taki sposób dość niespodziewany, ponieważ wszystko urwało się nagle. Oczywiście mniej więcej od połowy gry, może nawet wcześniej, można się było tego spodziewać, że jednak Michael jest rozpuszczony, bo te jego wizje, w których widział rzeczy, które jeszcze się nie zdarzyły, Dużo mówiły o tym, że może być chory. Po tym, co słyszeliśmy z ust tej pielęgniarki, po tym, co słyszeliśmy też, też z innych źródeł, mogliśmy właśnie domyślić się tego, że, że Michael jest chory. Generalnie no, to, co podkreślałem kilka razy w trakcie rozgrywki i podkreślę to tutaj już na wstępie, bo moim zdaniem jest to istotne, nie por za nieporozumienie uważam klasyfikację wiekową 12+, plus. myślę, że 16+, plus to jest minimum. Mnóstwo, mnóstwo brutalności jest w tej grze. Zarówno wizualnie, mimo że to jest kreskówkowa grafika, to jednak, kiedy natykamy się pierwszy raz na park samobójców, kiedy mnóstwo ciał wisi na drzewach, po raz drugi, kiedy... Jesteśmy w ośrodku medycznym i widzimy pod nami, jak zwłoki zakrwawione, bez życia, no zwłoki są zawsze bez życia w zasadzie, rzucane są na sterty. No i po raz trzeci, kiedy widzimy, jak rozpuszcza się kolin, no to są te chwile, w których nasze oczy wzrokowo, powiedzmy, możemy być zszokowani. No i jednocześnie wszystkie te sytuacje szokują nas także emocjonalnie, bo są okrutne, są smutne. Mocno można je przeżyć. A takich sytuacji jest więcej, bo cały wątek z Rose, która początkowo jest wykorzystywana seksualnie przez ludzi, no i jest bezwolna, mimo że nie ma do końca kontaktu z rzeczywistością właściwego, to jednak... No, trafia w ręce ludzi, którzy się nad nią, powiedzmy sobie to wprost, znęcają, zarabiają na jej krzywdzie. No i na koniec, kiedy bierze broń i strzela do tych swoich prześladowców. Nie rozwiązuje tej problemów, to jest najgorsze. Może poczuć się przez chwilę wolna, ale co później, co będzie dalej? Trudno powiedzieć. Możemy też spojrzeć na sytuację Roda i jego żony, którzy wszystko podporządkowali synowi. No i okazuje się, że ta ich walka jest bezsensowna, nie przynosi żadnych rezultatów. W końcu ich syn umiera w męczarniach. No i właściwie każda pojedyncza postać z tych bardziej pozytywnych przeżywa swój mały dramat. Dramat przeżywa też nasz przyjaciel, który nie dość, że sam porusza się jest na wózku inwalidzkim. No to w dodatku okazuje się, że jego żona zginęła, została zabita przez żołnierzy. Mnóstwo małych dramatów, które y, łączą się w dramat całej ludzkości. No i kolejna 
rzecz to sama fabuła już nie od strony tej brutalności, ale od strony konsekwencji, bo autorzy nie poszli na łatwiznę i jakichś tam wielu pozytywnych aspektów pokrzepiających nie przemycili. Po prostu to jest konsekwentny, ponury, ponura rzeczywistość budowana z wielką konsekwencją przez autorów i za to należą im się niewątpliwie brawa. Mnie ta gra kilka razy, może nie jakoś mocno wstrząsnęła, no ale poruszyła mną w tych trzech momentach, w których, o których właśnie mówiłem, no, ale także, także w innych. Te poszczególne wątki, jak na przykład wątek Rose, no też się gdzieś tam odłożył w mojej, w mojej psychice i też mnie poruszył. Ale właśnie dzięki temu, że ta gra nie jest urzeczniona, jest taka konsekwentna, mocna, emocjonalna, no to myślę, że warto to docenić. Warto docenić tę historię opowiedzianą przez autorów. Szkoda tylko, że zakończenie nagle się urywa bez odpowiedzi, ale ma powstać, powstaje już w zasadzie kontynuacja. Ciekaw jestem, kiedy będzie jej premiera, no i czy ona również ukaże się w języku polskim, czy Techland zdecyduje się ją wydać. Mam nadzieję, że tak, bo myślę, że warto poznać ciąg dalszy tej historii, czy Michael uratuje ludzkość, czy będzie pokazane, jak zmaga się z chorobą i próbuje ratować świat, czy może na tych mrocznych ścieżkach jego losy będą ukazane, czyli gdzieś tam, może pomiędzy tym naszym światem, a światem umarłych. Wszystko się okaże. No i ciekawe, czy poznamy też, czy poznamy dalsze losy Roda, czy poznamy dalsze losy Rose, no i innych postaci, łowcy na przykład. No ciekawe, ciekawe jak to wszystko się rozwinie, o ile rzecz jasna kontynuacja powstanie. Zatem pozytywnie oceniam fabułę. Może mam niedosyt, jeśli chodzi o zakończenie. Co do grafiki, to ma ona niewątpliwie swój styl. Ja nie do końca jestem fanem karykaturalnych sylwetek postaci, a w tej grze takie były, ale można się do tego wszystkiego przyzwyczaić. Dialogi były, myślę, dość dobre. Dubbing również. Jedna taka dość humorystyczna postać. W zasadzie dwie, bo ten jeden żołnierz dogryzał nieco drugiemu. Także to była taka nieco lżejsza lżejszy moment, chociaż też nie do końca, bo jego zakończenie do, lekkiego, do lekkich nie należało. Muzyka przyzwoita, może bez jakiejś wielkiej rewelacji, no ale też niektóre motywy muzyczne robiły dobre wrażenie, dobrze pasowały do klimatu rozgrywki. No i myślę, że generalnie większość elementów tejże gry zasługuje na słowa pochwały. Zagadki były na odpowiednim moim zdaniem poziomie. Dwa razy korzystałem z solucji, a wcześniej w trzech przygodówkach z rzędu nie musiałem z niej korzystać. Spotkałem się wprawdzie z głosami, że zagadki są łatwe i oczywiste, no ale jak widać nie dla wszystkich dla mnie takie do końca nie były. No choćby użycie zębów swoich czy też kilka innych sytuacji, no, mo mogło sprawić problem. No ale generalnie gra nie była na tyle trudna, by odstraszyć jakichś tam może porządkujących przygodomaniaków, czy, no, czy generalnie każdego, kto chciał też jakiegoś wyzwania tutaj doświadczyć. No, zatem i ten element, myślę, może nie tyle zasługuje na jakieś wielkie uznanie, co jest poprawny, przyzwoity. No i w zasadzie tyle. No ciekaw jestem, co wy sądzicie o tej grze. Czy uważacie, że jest ciekawa, że została ona, fabuła, dobrze poprowadzona? Może trochę, jeszcze jedna rzecz. Może trochę było to zbyt przewidywalne, bo bardzo szybko domyśliłem się, że Michael jest rozpuszczony i może nieco zbyt często pojawiały się te przerywniki z wizjami naszego bohatera, a taka ciekawostka, kiedy grałem po raz pierwszy, no to musiałem się naczekać yy, sporo czasu, zanim w tej kluczowej lokacji, kiedy mieliśmy zyskać generator, zabrać go, yy, zanim tam się akurat drugi raz załadowała retrospekcja, bo za pierwszym razem no, nie udało mi się jej wykorzystać. No także takie drobne może niuanse, które jednak nie rzutują w jakiś znaczący sposób na, na, na moją ocenę gry. 
No i generalnie był, jestem zadowolony i przyznaję ocenę ósemkę z minusem w 10-stopniowej skali. Także to już wszystko. Myślę, że nie będę czekał do końca napisów, bo tutaj autorzy dziękują wszystkim osobom, które wpłaciły na Kickstarterze pieniądze. Także to już wszystko. Do usłyszenia. Pa, pa.